Hi, Scissorin here with another episode of Path of Exile University. And uh, this is episode two, Getting Geared 101 with Professor Scissorin. And uh, this is a series we do that we are going to be redoing every league. This episode is for before League 3.13. So it'll be up to date for everything here. Um, and we're going to be talking about how to gear your character. It'll be slightly more advanced than the first episode we did, which was uh, Pee Wee 101. Um, but it is a good, like, if you watch the first one, this one should make a lot of sense. We'll be recovering a little bit of the stuff as well. And yeah, we're going to be very focused on how to gear your character uh, and talking about the different gear slots. So, in Path of Exile, you have a helmet, you have a body armor, you have gloves, you have boots, you have a main hand and an off hand, you have an amulet, you have a left and a right ring slot, you have a belt, and you have five different flasks where you can choose from life, mana, or utility flasks, or also hybrid, which is both life and mana. There is no pants. There is no pants in this game. So, you'll fit right in. Nice. Um, let's see. Whoops. So, I'm going to show what it looks like in-game. Here, so you can see that I have, like, two wands. That's the main hand, off hand. If you're using a two-hander, it will... Let's see. There. It'll look like that. It'll make, like, a shadow version of the two-hander. Uh, again, no pants. Um, I don't know why they decided to go with no pants, but here we are. And, uh, there's obviously different stats per slot and stuff like that. Um, there will be, like, some mods, like, some modifiers for items. And make sure you have watched PoE 101 because a lot of this is covered there. And I'm going to try not to, like, overlap too much except for very important things. But, you know, you can get life on a helmet and gloves. But, for example, a... Glove, you get an attack speed modifier, which a helmet cannot. Pants is a paid DLC. <laughs> nice one. Right. But that is the uh, the inventory slot that we have available in this game. There's a another one from a league called the Trinket. We're not going to cover that. We're also not talking about jewels yet. Um, we are now going to talk about the core defenses of Path of Exile. <clears throat> So we have armor, evasion, energy shield, and we have hybrid defenses. Let's start with armor and explain this type. So armor, which has a strength requirement when it's on, for example, a chest piece. Um, so if you find a like glorious armor, we'll pull that up as an example. Glorious armor, POE. You can see here, this is a glorious armor and it has a required level 68 and 191 strength. Um, and the way this would work is if it was hybrid, if it was like armor and evasion, then it would be strength and dex requirement. Um, but we want to explain armor. So what does armor do? It's arguably the most complicated. Well, I mean, they're all complicated in their own way, but armor sort of lies to you in a way, uh, which is very, very unintuitive as a new player because armor We'll here show you that you have a 3% estimated physical damage reduction. Uh, and I can log on a different character, um, which will probably say it has a lot more physical reduction. But a lot of these things are lies and you should not believe them. Um, okay, it still only says it has 16%. Uh, but armor will um, change this number, which is an estimate physical damage reduction. Um, and I actually have this as a command in my channel on Twitch as well. Um, which is the TLDR or the rule of thumb is armor does not actually grant the percent of reduction to physical damage that the tooltip states. There is a hidden mechanic for armor where armor only allows at most 10% of the armor rating as reduction in physical damage. So that means... If you have 25,000 armor, it might say like 80 or 90% physical reduction here, but it will only reduce 2,500 damage. That is the most 25,000 armor will do. Now I remember what the max 
Um, it, it never reduces more than like either 75% or 90% either. Like I pretty 95% sure it can't reduce it to zero. But either way, uh, it's important to note that armor is very, very diff. It is 90%. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so you can never reduce it past 90%. So you'll, no matter what, take 10% of the physical damage. And a lot of these things are not explained in game. Um, and it's important to note just because of the way the game lies to you. Um, armor excels ex exceptionally at whenever you're taking multiple small hits. Because then something like a granite flask, which gives armor. Granite flask here, you can see it gives 3000 armor. This is exceptionally strong during the campaign. Armor is by no means bad. Um... It is actually a very, very good stat and a, a decent way to mitigate physical damage. Um, but there's a, there's a very, very uh, important thing to remember here. And that is we also have access to things like a Basalt Flask, which is 15% uh, additional physical damage reduction. And this is pretty much exactly what it says on the bottle, um, which is that if I um, say I'm about to take a thousand damage, this will shave off 150 if I'm about to sh take a thousand damage, this will shave off exactly 300. Um, so obviously the bigger the hit is, um, as a, as a counter example, if immediately after, if we're taking 10,000 damage, this will now shave off 1,500. This will still shave off 300. So the rule of thumb here is that percentage damage mitigation is, um, is really, really good for like big hits slams like when you see a boss doing a big wind up attack uh like vol malachi some of the bosses in the game they do like they they do really really high damage slams and that's when you want percentage physical damage so there's some ways to get this like endurance charges which, which we can talk about later basalt flask some skill trees have it endurance charges there are ways to get that and that is very strong uh, and you can stack that with armor too um like, you can use both, and a lot of characters do. Um, but for armor, basically, very, very important. The first 10 acts, um, and very strong in the first 5 to 10 tiers of maps, which is Path of Exile's endgame. Let's see. So, as another core defense, we have Evasion, not to be confused for Dodge. There are two different ones there, but uh, Evasion is a chance to evade the damage from attacks. So, if a if a monster, like say a goat, is throwing a spark projectile at you, Evasion doesn't do anything. It's specifically only from attacks. So, um, like if they're attacking you with a sword or jumping on you, etc. Anything that's like, you know, a physical attack, not from spells. Um, and evasion is also very, very strong. It's usually part of different layers of defense, which we are, uh, we're, we're making another episode about that, which is, um, layered defenses with Nugian. Uh, he's extremely knowledgeable and it starts at 3 p.m. on Tuesday. Um, but yeah, evasion, very, very much used with like layered defenses. So you maybe have like, you, you can stack some armor or dodge, which we'll talk about later, is a different type of defense. Uh, or, you know, you have some other things that do percentage fist reduction, like the Basalt Flask, uh, to make sure that if you do get hit, you don't get one shot. Because again, evasion, it doesn't do any spells. It will do like elemental damage. So if you have like a fire bow archer firing at you, it will avoid that attack, but not spells. Um... Evasion is also entropy based. Um, that means that you will get hit sooner or later. It like yeah, every time you miss a hit, like the chance that your next yeah, you will you will get hit eventually. Basically, is the TLDR for evasion. Still very very strong, and it basically it it's extremely strong when there are um, a lot of enemies attacking you. And, um, yeah, it is very, very weak against the slams that we previously discussed. 
because, you know, if that one does go through and you don't have enough mitigation, you might get one shot. Next up, we have Energy Shield, which is very, very different than Armor Innovation because it doesn't, um, it doesn't mitigate any damage or let you avoid damage. It actually absorbs damage exactly the same as life. And they are a one-to-one. -one. There's no, um, one life doesn't count as two energy shield. Like, if you're taking 100 damage, that is 100 damage on energy shield or life. Um, there are some differences between the two. Um, energy shield will recharge over time. And it starts, is it two seconds? Well, you can, you can increase your recharge time. Um and recharge rate and stuff like that. You can get life regen as well. And they're, they are just like two separate health values. Um, by default, all chaos damage goes straight through energy shield. But uh, there are ways to stop that as well, as well which we'll talk about later. But um, by default, chaos damage does go through. So, you know, without doing anything special, you can't just stack loads of uh, energy shield. Um... But then you have um, life as well, where you can get like life region and stuff like that. Um, energy shield. Yeah, recharge is exactly two seconds after not being hit. And you can increase that rate for when it starts. Um, and there's so, so many cool things that you can do. But energy shield is definitely more advanced. Uh, the reason... The reason why you will see some people, especially like a lot of people will be streaming energy shield builds where they have like one life or very, very little life. They are more advanced builds, um, but they, uh, yeah, there, there's so much energy shield you can get on gear. As an example, um, you can get chests with, I think you can get at least up to 800 or 850 energy shield right now in a chest. I'm trying to remember what exactly a perfectly rolled chest is. And that can still be six socketed and six linked, whereas the most life you can get on a um, chest for life is 500 life on a Combs Heart, which is an item that I think I have one here, but it doesn't even have um, sockets. Oh, I don't have one actually. It doesn't even have sockets. So for a lot of items where it ends up being you can maybe get 100 to 140 life, you can get 250 to 300 plus energy shield. So energy shield in the end game basically just lets you stack up such a like large raw amount of life um there are no flasks for energy shield there's no energy shield flask uh and it's like very very different how you recover energy shield it can be a combination of leech uh or other things to recover it but it is like they are different from each other um then you do have like the hybrid defenses on gear as well which is you know, armor evasion, evasion energy shield, and armor energy shield, which also means their stat requirement um, will be split between those. Right, let's see. Move to the next slide. Now, I was tempted to have this in the 101, and maybe I should have, but um, try not to overwhelm people with information. Um, here we're going to talk about resistances. So resistances is a very, very important thing in Path of Exile. It isn't in every game. In a lot of games, they work differently. But in Path of Exile, you are basically expected, especially on hardcore, you are expected to have 75% fire, cold, and lightning resist from probably around Act 4. And you will be very, very punished if you don't. Um, so you'll see a lot of people that don't care about their gear on softcore can end up having a large amount of deaths going through the campaign and, and face rushing bosses is very, very popular in softcore. Um, and especially in the end game, like in maps, you are completely expected to uh, have 75, 75, 75 on fire, cold and lightning. Your chaos rest, we'll talk about in a, in a few seconds, it's not as expected. Um, and do remember that you do lose 30% uh, res at Kitava in Act 5 and again in Act 10. In Act 10, it will say minus 60 res. So you might think that you lost 30 and then 60 for a total of 90, but it is a total of minus 60. Um, and this basically like straight up like reduces the damage. So if you're if you're taking um, 100 fire damage and you have 75 fire res, you'll be taking 25. Very, very straightforward. 
So um, it's very important for the game and, and the game does expect you to have it. I know a lot of games don't. There's a lot of games where resists are just like, you know, yeah, you're playing hardcore, you want to be tankier, but you don't need it. Um, so that's a bit different here. And it it, it uh, decreases the damage from both direct hits, so like a fireball hitting you, but also if that fireball ignites you, which happens when, for example, the monster does a critical hit on you, um, and that has fire damage over time, that will still um, be mitigated by fire resist. And then there are things you can do in the game to increase your maximum resist as well, which is 75, but you can get it above. The absolute max is 90. Um, Chaos resistance is a little bit harder to figure out um, how much you need and when. Sometimes whenever Path of Exile does a league update, like does a new league mechanic, there will be early game chaos damage, which, which throws a lot of people off. Um, talismans have uh, ha used to have like an insane amount of chaos damage early on. And that's very, very like it changes the community a lot in a way because Right now, for the most part, you don't have to bother much about Chaos Damage until Act 7. Um, so it depends a little bit on the League mechanic. Sometimes they just do like throw some Chaos Damage at you. But in Act 7, you start encountering a mechanic called Incursion. And that starts having a lot more Chaos Damage. Even so, you don't really and I never really care about getting Chaos Res in even the first five tiers of maps. And you notice that if you're even able to get like minus 20 chaos res, because you do have minus 60 once you finish the campaign, but if you manage to get like minus 20 or close to positive, it does such a large difference because you can really feel that the game isn't expecting you to have a large amount of chaos resistance. Um, and it's more later in the game when you start fighting, there's a chaos damage boss called Al Hazmin. That's when you do need to start thinking like, okay, I want at least like, positive or like maybe 20% positive chaos rest. Um, so that's not something you really have to worry about as a new player and is even much less of a worry on softcore because chaos damage is so rare compared to the others. The the others are like very, very common and uh, a more advanced thing that I'm not going to cover right now, but you can go something called chaos inoculation, which blocks chaos resistance completely. But then you're playing an energy shield build which is not very beginner friendly. Right. There are other defenses in Path of Exile. It's not just the ones we've covered already. Um, there is quite a few. So dodge. Uh, there is uh, both spell dodge and normal dodge. And um, this is just a flat percentage chance to dodge. It doesn't change. It's not entropy based. Uh, if you have 75% dodge, you could technically dodge 10 hits in a row, whereas evasion is entropy based and you will eventually get hit. Dodge is not like that uh, and is a very, very strong mechanic. Again, coupled with like multi-layer defenses, which we will talk about in the defense um, episode. But um, yeah, ideally, I think the main takeaway I want people to have from this is don't just have one defense. Don't just have armor. Don't just have dodge. Don't, don't just have evasion or block. You, you ideally want to have multiple in Path of Exile. Um, so a quick example before we progress here. Um, the way I've built a lot of my characters is it's with like very high dodge and evasion, but with maybe like 20 to 30% uh, mitigation and like things like physical mitigation and obviously being resist capped. And the way that ends up working then is I'm barely ever getting hit. I'm running around and, and movement, well, we haven't like included it here, but movement is actually a very big form of mitigation in Path of Exile because monsters will actually just start attacking towards you and full on miss. Um, but the, like when I'm running a build like that, I'm barely ever getting hit. And then when I do get hit, I make sure that that one hit count one shot me because I'm very rarely taking multiple hits back to back. Um, so that's that's a really, really like good way. Um, next up, we have block. Um, there are like you have you can use block when you're dual wielding. You can use a staff. You can use a shield um, and that like will prevent the damage entirely. 
Uh, and there is also both attack block and spell block. Um, and yeah, it's a very, very strong form of defense. There are some builds that will do both dodge and block. And that is extremely strong if you're able to get both. Very, very difficult. Um, but, um, and, and something that's really cool with block in Path of Exile, which you can't do with dodge, is that there are things that will, like, in the end game, there will be things that will, like, let you have something happen when you block. Like, you'll gain life when you block. Um, and there are so many things that we're not going to cover that you can do with block, but it is a very, very strong form of defense. And it is much harder to get both spell dodge and spell block than it is to get normal dodge and attack block. Those are actually fairly easy to get to their soft cap, which is 75. You can like get slightly higher, but um, yeah, 75 of the normal dodge and the normal attack block is fairly easy to do. Now you have avoidance and you also have different ailments in Path of Exile, and they're bound to like the, the damage type. That is, well, it's fairly obvious. If you're doing cold damage, all cold damage will chill pretty much. Um, and then a little bit complicated, but like there are like health thresholds. Like for example, if you were dealing one to 10 cold damage, you can't like chill or, um, uh, or you can't freeze, sorry, a boss that has like a million life, right? There will be like thresholds, which have like calculations in them, uh, that like something you'll notice as a new player even is that, um, if you are playing a cold damage build, you'll see that you're shattering maybe like rats and, and uh, tentacle monsters and like lower health monsters. But you might see that there's a bear or a big golem uh, and you might not be freezing that. So that that's like the first indication as a player. They have that there are thresholds involved that you need to hit of like damage values. Um, and then next we have shock, which is obviously from lightning damage. We have ignite from fire damage. Um, we have poison. Poison is a little bit different. Poison can be from both physical damage and chaos damage. Um, and as a quick rule of thumb, all poison damage is chaos, but not all chaos damage is poison. Um, so, uh, that's like a, a rule of thumb for poison there, because that does get a lot of questions. Um, bleed, which comes from physical damage, and you can have, like, chance to bleed and stuff. Um... And then you have more advanced ailments, which is Scorch, which is fire, Sap, which is lightning, and Brittle, which is cold. Uh, these are like sort of new elements and they're getting used more and more uh, very frequently on unique items and stuff. There's very few monsters that will do these ailments to you. Um, avoiding ailments is very, very important in Path of Exile. Um, and this is where I'm going to go back to flasks a little bit. <clears throat> uh, avoiding elements is extremely important. And there's a couple that you want that are like on softcore. A lot of this isn't mandatory because, you know, if you're dying a lot in the early game and stuff to things, that's not that punishing. Uh, but on hardcore, it, it very much so is. So you can see on like flasks, I actually have you. You can roll stats on your flasks. So one of the elements we talked about was bleeding. Uh, here you see that on my Basil Flask, I have immunity to bleeding, which means that as long as this flask is up, I can't get, uh, monsters can't bleed me. And there are several dangerous things with bleed monsters can do. Um, on this other flask, I have immunity to curses. It's not an ailment, it's just fairly important for hardcore, but we'll talk more about that later. Uh, and on this character, I actually have um, ailment immunity. The easiest way to get the elements like, or getting immunity to like freeze, freeze, bleed um, is like the, yeah, freeze and bleed is the most important ones. The easiest way to get that is through flask like I just showed and you can get freeze immunity on a flask as well. Uh, and a more advanced thing is you can get it through your gear. I'm actually fully immune to all the elements, um, but that is very, very advanced. And the most important thing as a new player, try to get freeze immunity and bleed immunity on a flask. If you have room for more, then the next one would be curse immunity. Um, it's very, very important. Freeze can get you killed so much when like opening strong boxes and stuff like that. Um, and you, you get frozen and suddenly you are dead. 
because if you are frozen there's well very little you can do and being frozen takes away the one of the larger defenses that i brushed on which is movement being able to run around and that the monster is like attacking where you were but you're not there anymore is very very strong um next up we have stun stun is um you'll notice a lot if you have a lot of players that are new to the game will have ran around on characters with like 2000 life um and you'll notice you're getting stunned a lot you're getting stun locked and killed stun is based on your raw life so um the the other defense that we talked about uh energy shield builds they have one life uh for the purposes of stun they don't actually have one life it's what you would have had if you didn't have the thing that gives you one life but uh whenever you do get like if you're following a guy that gets you a lot of life say you have five or six thousand seven thousand life you'll very rarely get stunned whereas an energy shield build if you had removed the node um you would have like 800 or 2000 life and then you'll notice you will be getting stunned a lot and uh, a lot of those builds have to find a different way of stun immunity because of this. There are a few things in the game as well that have like straight up general damage avoidance. The, a lot of these are more complicated and we are not going to cover them right now because they are not super relevant. Let's go a little bit more advanced into talking about um, different types of damage types. Uh, and we can quickly brush on pantheons as well. <clears throat> Here we have, first of all, we have like melee and ranged attacks. Um, all attacks are hits. Like if I'm hitting something with Reeve or Heavy Strike, that's a hit. There are like quite a lot of things in the game that are like degens. We'll cover that third. But uh, yeah, all, all attacks have like an initial hit. Um, there will be, for a lot of attack skills, there will be specific weapons that you have to use. So, for example, we brushed on Reeve in the previous episode, and Reeve can only be used with, like, a sword, a claw. Well, it can't be used with an axe or a mace. Um, and this is very, very, like, something you see a lot with attacks. Uh, both ranged as well, because um, on ranged attacks, you will, for example, kinetic blast cannot be used with a bow. Uh, it can only be used with a wand. It cannot be used with an axe. And same with, uh, there are things that can only be used with, like, caustic arrow cannot be used with a wand or with an axe. Um, <clears throat> so here you'll, you'll see more of, uh, like, they're locked behind, like, the base types. Spells are very differently. There are no requirement for any spell on what you need to, like, use. Um, so if I'm completely unarmed, I can cast any spell. And there are, there are, like, there are spells that are degens, which are damage over time. We'll talk about that in a sec. You have um, spells that will um, have like a big AOE on like, like it'll have like a big circle. It'll cover like, for example, cold snap and you'll just tap right click cold snap on the screen and it'll just make an area of effect, um, which is AOE, obviously AOE, area of effect, sorry. Um, it'll make an AOE on the ground and do damage in that area. Or you'll have like fireball, which is a projectile you like target it against something, um, and it'll it'll shoot it in that direction and hit it. Damage over time is different. Damage over time is also spells, but they scale differently. Um, some damage over time spells will scale from spell damage. Not all damage over time does. Uh, and it, it's, a, it's a little bit complicated. We're going to try to cover it as best we can. It's very, very important in Path of Exile to read the skill gems. So if we go and look at Essence Drain, which is a damage over time um, skill, and we can look at Soul Rend as well, um, you can see that the second line from the bottom in blue says modifiers to spell damage apply to this skill's damage over time effect. And same thing here on Soul Rend. Um, <clears throat> because not every damage over time has something like this. It's not the default. So reading is very, very important. Um, damage over time is skilled with, there are separate stats for it. Global increased damage would work. 
and you'll have things like increased damage over time or increased chaos damage would work for these two skills, for example. Um, and, and in this case, spell damage does work. We can talk um, about another damage over time as well, like fire. If you do a critical hit on fire or if you have high chance to ignite, you will ignite the target. Um, when you've ignited the target, it will start taking fire damage over time. This is not affected by spell damage. It's like based on your hit plus uh, scaling from like your damage over time scaling. And for, for all damage over time scaling, the number one thing, um, the number one thing that you can get for scaling your damage is increased damage over time multiplier. Um, and we can now start talking about increased and more as well here in a second. Um, actually, we can just talk about that now. Uh, but the ignite obviously would not be affected by spell damage. Then you would need increased fire damage, increased damage over time, or increased damage over time multiplier. And m there, there's a very, very large difference in Path of Exile between more versus increased. And it's also something that isn't necessarily explained in-game. Um, so all the increased ones... Uh, let, let's say I have a fireball and I'm dealing 10 damage. I'm dealing 10 damage and I have fireball. And I will get like... You'll put them into like different math brackets. But all the ones that are increased will be additive with itself. The, the, the simple rule of thumb is more is better. More is always better. Uh, and they also are multiplicative with themselves when you have like, you have skill gems, you have a lot, you have more multiplier. Well, there's not that many more multipliers on the skill tree, but, uh, easiest is to think of it as a, a, a more as a multiplier and increase is additive. Um, that is the easiest without going too advanced and showing loads of math and stuff. Um... There's one quick exception I want to um, mention as well. So, for example, if I have like, I have loads of increased fire damage, I've increased spell damage, I have increased just generic damage. These are all um, additive with each other and they're still good. But then um, there is one stat that is important to distinguish here. If you have then a separate uh, a separate group, like enemies take more increased damage. These are additive with other increased damage, but would be multiplicative with like your character's increased damage types. Um, and, and now we're like getting a little bit too advanced, so I'll stop it there. But ideally just get as much more multiplier as possible. When there's only one, if you have like 100 fire damage and you get 100% increased, that is exactly the same as 100% more um, because it's all about having a large amount of them. The more, more multipliers you get, they stack up very hard. But again, there's not much of a reason for you to understand why you just need to understand that more is better. More is better than increased. And then you have um, increased and reduced is the same. And you have more and less. There are a lot of other damage types as well. And a lot of like different ways of dealing damage. So you have chaos damage. Um, chaos damage can be on attack. There is a lot of chaos skills. Um, and and uh, before we move on, yes, more is multiplicative with itself. That's why it's so strong. Um, whereas it increases additive with itself. But yeah, there's a lot of Chaos Damage skills, Essence Drain, Soul Rain, Toxic Rain, uh, and these are like, they don't poison by default, but all Chaos and Poison Damage can, sorry, all Chaos and Physical Damage can poison if you get a chance to poison. Um, uh, there's some really, really cool things about Chaos Damage. A lot of the Chaos skills will go, I think all of them, I think all of the Chaos Damage skills, like even Toxic Rain, uh, Caustic Arrow, Essence Drain, Soul Rain, they all go through... Uh, enemy proximity shields, which are like things to like prevent you from attacking them without getting very close. Uh, and they also go through energy shield. 
So uh, there's a lot of benefits to using Chaos Damage. Um, mines. There's both mines and traps, and they're like a different play style of doing damage. Um, you're not like directly casting or hitting or attacking with these, and they are always with spells. Um, except from a few, you can make a few bow attacks with traps as well, um, and mines. Uh, but you can't do like, you can't do heavy strike mines or, or reeve trap. That'd be fun, but you can't do that. It's only, uh, only spells and some attacks. Um, any ranged attack. Um, so a lot of people will be wondering what is the difference between mines and traps? Well, traps, you're throwing them. Um, you're throwing them at the, uh, at the enemy. And uh, whenever an enemy walks on them, they detonate. And there are like things you can do that you'll have like if one trap detonates, all of them detonates. Mines are different. You place mines at your feet, and then when you want to, you can detonate them. Um, a quick magical quality of life thing I can show here. Um, a lot of new players, especially with, will find any mine build or anything using mines extremely clunky because you'll get like a. Um, what will, what will happen is you'll get a detonate button and you have to, like, may, say you're, say that you're a new player, you're following a arc mine guides. Um, yes, yeah, sorry, you do actually throw mines now too. You don't actually place them at your field, feet anymore. But, um, so they're very, very similar now. The only difference is the detonation. Uh, but now I've thrown a mine over here and you would have to click detonate for every mine you want to detonate. Well, I mean, it'll detonate all your mines, but... A lot of people find this very clunky. A quick trick you can do, you can put this on your mouse button one and you can see that I am moving as if I am holding down mouse button one. And what happens then is whenever I throw out a mine, it'll instantly detonate it. Um, and that is extremely, extremely... Oh, my camera's over it. People convinced me to switch it from left to right. Sorry. You see here, you can see that I have remote detonate on mouse button one. So instead of using this, I just have it on mouse button one. And it will detonate it for you. So this is a very, very big quality of life. I can't do this just yet. So very, very, very nice for a lot of people. Very popular. A lot of people do that. Um Right. Next up, we have minions. There's, uh, oh, and, and for mines, you will also want things like cast speed doesn't affect it. Same with traps. You want trap throwing speed or mine placement speed. Um, they are affected by things like generic increased damage or, you know, if you're doing arc binds, they would be affected by lightning damage. Um, mines also reserve mana, uh, whereas traps like cost mana to cast. So there's some like difference there. Um, but, uh, they are very, very similar in playstyle. Um, yes, there are some things you can do to make normal cast speed affected, but it's a little bit more advanced than we're skipping that. Minions, there are so many minions in Path of Exile. Uh, you have zombies, you have summon raging spirits, you have specters, skeletons, golems, six consoles. Um, there's so many different minions. And a lot of players don't love the playstyle of minions. Some of them can be kind of stupid. They are fairly good now. They're like insanely strong. Very, very, very uh, meta a lot of the time just because of like sheer strength. Um, but as you can see on the uh, PowerPoint, they are only affected by things that say minion. So if I am using um, flame golems, fire golems, um, and I get fire damage on my wand, that doesn't increase my minion's fire damage. If I am using zombies, um, then they will not be increased by physical damage anywhere. So, and, and even if I have my skill tree, get global, like, just increased damage. If it says, like, 30% increased damage, it does also not affect my minion. Uh, only stuff that say minion damage. And minion stuff does affect it. Um, this is different from gems. 
Like if I, for example, and somebody asked, what about added fire damage support? If I have skeletons, summon skeleton, and I will link it with added fire damage, that links directly to the minion. So that works. So support gems, yes, they do work. But uh, things on your skill tree or on rings and stuff and amulets, it would have to say minion steal, increased damage. Let's see. There, and then we have projectiles. Projectiles, um, they can be both attacks and spells. Like, for example, we had the example of Fireball and Cold Snap earlier. Cold Snap would be an AoE. Um, Cold Snap would be an AoE, and then um, Fireball would be a projectile. Um, yeah. And then totems also, like, you can have totems that will, like, cast everything. And there's a lot of gear that will help you, like, do totems as well. Um, w with all of these as well, it's sort of self-explanatory. Like, the only one that doesn't get affected by, like, global increased damage is minions. Everything else does. And you'll have, like, projectile damage, totem damage. Um, and, like, you'd have, like, brands are sort of, like, moving totems. You'll have a lot of, like, yeah, um, stuff like that that are, like, uh, different ways of modifying your attacks like totems brands are both like great examples of modifying your attacks and they are also affected by increased damage and then you have a lot of their own specific damage type like brand brand damage uh, let's see we have melee we have unarmed and as a quick example here of unarmed and making that be a thing you can do i'm gonna log on my necromancer there is a fairly popular item called Facebreaker. What on earth necro did I have that on? Facebreaker that lets you like attack technically using your hands. Um, and it'll just start multiplying any flat physical you get from anywhere. Um, very, very popular in Path of Exile to guess what kind of uh, Facebreaker you're going to get. Because it gets between 600 and 800. Um... So uh, here I would like multiply like 792 more physical damage. So if I get like loads of flat fizz on my rings, my amulet, um, everywhere, right? You want as much as possible. We'll talk more about that in a sec. Let's see. Um, yes. Uh, there's a lot of damage conversion in the game as well. You can convert, for example, your physical damage to be elemental. Um, so you can do physical to fire, etc. Uh, and there is a very, very specific chain here. Where like you can never make chaos be fire damage. So it's always goes physical to lightning to coal to fire to chaos. So, um, a little bit more advanced. We can try... I think we talk a little bit about that later. Right. Moving on. Oop. We're, we're going to be talking about PoEDB a lot here as well. Very, very useful third-party website. Um, and uh, we've already covered some of this in, like, the, um, the first PoE episode. Uh, let's see and and we will be like going very very in depth into how, like how to craft for like actually making your own gear but uh yeah like a quick recap path of exile has six affixes on items you can have three prefixes three suffixes and then you have magic items have one prefix one suffix um here here is like face breakers again like we were showing um and is very very useful in a lot of builds a lot of face breakers have been very very popular for a long time uh and the way this would work is that you uh, you would stack a large amount of flat physical you would stack a large amount of flat physical on your gear on jewels which we haven't talked about uh and just everywhere you can and here you see that it is a global 30 percent global critical strike multiplier Somebody asks, is it true that you can get eight affixes by corruption? No, only in Path of Exile in 2012. 
only in 2012. Um, and Doriani's Fist here is another unique or legendary item, orange, orange item, uh, that we can talk about. It actually grants a skill, and you can see that it gives you, it adds lightning damage to unarmed attacks. Uh, it adds lightning damage to spells while unarmed. Um, and a lot of uniques in Path of Exile are like um, build changing or build enabling. Um, the biggest the biggest thing for like people coming from something like Diablo 3 um, or other ARPGs, they might be very, very used to uniques or legendaries being the end all be all. Uh, but Path of Exile isn't. In Path of Exile, rare items is the end all be all. Um, and that's what makes it so hard and why episodes like this is needed. Uh, to explain a lot of the fundamentals and how to understand what gear is good and stuff. And we, we will be, we have both like how to craft items 101 and how to know when your items are good um, tomorrow that I'll be covering. Let's see. And I, I, the, the local and global, we covered a lot in the POE 101. Um... And again, really, really important. Remember to get resist capped as early as you can. Uh, an advanced, an advanced player can even get resist capped in like Act Two or Act Three. Uh, and I know it is a struggle for a lot of people. I used to do something called build roasts, and I have it have a large amount of people that would be in the end game. They'd be in tier five or tier ten maps, and they would just be dying a large amount because they did not have resist capped. Um. There's some rule of thumbs here for gearing. Um, and something worth mentioning as well, people always like wonder what to look for in gear. Every gear piece you have, ideally you would want one life roll, um, one life roll at least, uh, and then at least one resist roll, ideally two. And we'll talk a little bit about the crafting bench too. But ideally at least the life roll, like, Think of it as this way, your each item you have should have at least two useful stats. At least. That is very important. Um, and then we can talk about the crafting bench in a bit where you can craft one more stat on. So if you are if your item has two useful stats and you can craft a third, that's great. If it has three useful stats and you can craft a fourth, that's like that's really good. That's what you really want to aim for. Um and we'll do very, very in-depth on the bench tomorrow. But the crafting bench is going to be a big part of it. Uh, and we have some rule of thumbs here. So like armor sauce here or like gloves, helmets, body armor and boots. You ideally have like life. I wouldn't care that much when gearing about, especially early on, about looking for things like, oh, increased armor. Like, oh, this chest, it doesn't have any life, but it has like 70 increased armor. That's good, right? Mostly, as a rule of thumb, go for life and resist while leveling. Um, boots can increase your character's movement speed, and it's very, very important to have Quicksilver as well. Uh, even just having a Quicksilver will also help quite a lot with defense. Your character, like, you really want to, like, see a lot of movement. If I'm not seeing enough movement, it's not good. Um, very, very strong form of defense. And then uh, one of the really, really good things about being able to have a chest on uh, and not having, for example, a comb's heart is that you can have a six link gem set up in your chest, which most characters will. Um, two handers, like either bows or scepter, sorry, um, staffs or like axes that are two handed can also have six links in them. So you'll see a lot of characters will go for like really, really tanky setups when they have a two hander where they will have like maybe a axe like a curry chopper and they'll use a combs heart so they have their six thing attack in their axe and then go for a combs heart which is a chest with 500 life that they will um use to get beefy beefy defenses on your weapons like these are generally you can actually roll resists on quite like every weapon uh but it's primarily all your weapon is for scaling your damage that that's like Regardless if you're casting spells or attacking, you ideally um, are using your weapons to scale how much damage you do. Um, and then um, it'll be increasingly important 
for anything that is an attack. So whether that is um, like something like Pyro Siphon for ones, um, uh, Tornado Shot for bows, or Reeve for weapons, it scales so much from your weapon. Very, very important um, to have like proper, proper weapons there. Um, and there are, there are some, we'll, we'll like mention some skills quickly that are attacks, but actually scale like spells. Um, and that is like, um, elemental hit, caustic arrow and toxic rain are some good examples. They are attacks, but they actually scale similar to a spell where there's not much like stats you carry on from a weapon, except from plus gem levels or like percentage damage. Uh, to scale your already like flat damage um, that you're getting from like the base gem. So there there are like some things there. Um, and then you have offhand equipment, which is like you can get a quiver, which can roll cool things like plus one additional arrow. Uh, you have a shield, which you can get. You can get some damage. You can get plus gem level, which is again very strong. Uh, and you can get life and block and resist. Um, on your rings, which uh, it can be pretty hard to get like hard, uh, good jewelry, um, but rings and amulets, you generally, especially for new players, you just want like 50, 60 life and then two resists and maybe a third crafted one. But generally you want resists. You're not looking for damage and stuff on rings and amulets and belts. Generally, you just want to be resist captain as one of the harder things for new players. And, and flasks, again, like like we talked about, getting the bleed, bleed immunity and the freeze immunity, extremely important. Extremely important. Uh, the other priorities after that is curse immunity would be the third. Um, and then the fourth would be shock immunity. Other than that, you don't, you don't care that much about other immunities. <clears throat> Let's see. Okay, we can take a bunch of questions 